Unlike a lot of RVers, we use our RV every month, but the summer is the busiest time of the year. In fact, in just a few days, we are about to take off and uh, we're going to be traveling non-stop pretty much uh, for the next several months. And Montana is our first destination. We're heading west and a lot of you have sent notes to us asking us, well, how do you prepare to take off on a long trip? So we thought we'd do a video. First thing I'm going to do is take everything out of the cabinets, wipe them out, wash the towels, wash the dishes, and resupply, restock everything. Wash the sheets, the bedding, everything. Get it nice and clean. For me, I'm taking it to the shop. With a bit over 20,000 miles on our 2017 Road Trek CS Adventurous XL 4x4, it was time for my tires to be rotated and a brake inspection done. Okay, the RV's in the shop. We're getting the wheels, we're getting the tires all checked out. That's the first step of being ready for the summer travel season. Biggest thing is check tires and brakes. Make sure if it's been sitting for, for, for a while that, that, that there's not a lot of rust. The worst thing with motorhomes and travel trailers and motorhomes is they sit too long. When they sit, the brakes lock up, things that you have, you have, just because it's got 15,000 miles on it does not mean that it's not ready to go. Doesn't mean that it is ready to go. They need to be checked, make sure the calipers are moving, make sure all the tire pressures are good, make sure there's no dry rot, dry rot or, or cracking in the tires. Uh, check your serpentine belts and all your fluids. And, and what about rotating the tires? How, how often on a motorhome should that be done? Motorhomes, there's not a lot of rotation. They should be done about every 15 to 20,000 miles, depending on how, mu how, how much use. Mm -hmm. uh, you got to watch for chopping and things like that. And we'll describe chopping. That's, uh... Chopping is, is, is a low, low tire pressure or not a balanced tire. It will be an uneven tread pattern. Uneven tread pattern will, will cause cause a chopping and a vibration at higher speeds. Uh, motorhomes, motorhomes and RVs have a, a lot of them have a special tire on them, which is a which is a UV rated tire because they sit more than they drive uh, to stop from the cracking and chafing and thing and things like that. Uh, fluids are another big thing. Generators. Things like that that's going to leave you on the side of the road. And when we look at our tires, what should we look for? You need to look for dry rot and cracking and make sure that somebody does the tire pressures the way they're supposed to be for factory recommendations. Now, duallys are a little trickier. Duallys are a little trickier. Uh, if you can't do them yourself, there's people out there that will do them for you. We have had a lot of problems with the valve stem extensions. Those are a huge problem in the motorhome world because they leak. So the inside dual tire may be low and the outside one will be okay. So you may be able to look at it and it may not look like it's low, but the inside one will be low. That's where you see tires that come apart on the road, and chunks of tires, they get hot, they get hot and they come apart because don't, of low, low pressure. And don't use those valve extensions. You, you gotta use a good, a good one. You gotta make sure that they're properly inflated before you go on a trip. So the wheels are all done, the tires are rotated, it's aligned. Now it's time to uh, take care of the engine. And we're um, heading over to uh, the Mercedes-Benz Sprinter uh, repair facility I use. It's a Hoekstra Transportation. They kind of work on school buses and they sell Sprinters. So they're a Sprinter service dealer. That's where I'm going next to, um, to get an oil change. Besides an oil change, we also put in a new fuel filter, something recommended at 20,000 miles. I am very particular about engine maintenance and following manufacturer suggestions. And there's also some shopping to do at the start of every season, every year, I buy new hose, a new water hose. Now it's important you make sure that it says it's safe, it's drinking water safe. Sometimes it's a white hose, this one happens to be blue. Now, uh, you will see advertised places that say, uh, no kink hose, don't believe it. They all kink, I've tried all of them. So I just usually go at the start of every year and I pick up a 50 foot roll, that usually is more than enough uh, to always make a water connection. 
Um, and one thing to look for, by the way, is a really is a sturdy, reinforced uh, connector on both ends of the uh, of the hose. And then with that new hose every year, I also get a new filter, a water filter. Uh, lots of people make these. I just buy these at my local uh, RV shop. Uh, I change this out every year as well. It goes in line between the hose and the water source, the spigot that you connect to. All right, before we take off on a long trip, we reactivate our Anytime Fitness membership because Anytime Fitness is good for the both of us. We can stop by and I'm pretty difficult to live with if I don't work out. What we like is the clubs are consistent. You have the same equipment usually at every club that you go to. One of the things we like about Anytime Fitness is when you're boondocking, they have individual private showers that you can use. So you can work out, get healthy, and then take a nice shower and get ready to get on the road again. And they even have scales if you want to weigh yourself. At the start of every season, we also top off our propane. Winter is when we use the most propane for our heater, but we also heat water and cook with it all year round, and I wouldn't want to run out. A full tank lasts all summer, well into the fall. So I've been also using this time to get my camera gear updated. I'm using a new camera now that you're looking at me through. This is the GoPro Hero 6. It is the uh, top of the line in the GoPro cameras, at least by my book. I have the Hero 5. I've had a couple of the other models. And uh, this is just great. Razor sharp resolution, super nice slow-mo. It's great for time-lapse lapse pictures. And I've got this mounted now uh, on a special suction cup mount facing backwards so that we can uh, talk and, uh, and report to you as we're driving. And uh, I think it's going to do a great job. I'm getting better sound with it because I'm using the new Rode Video Micro uh, shotgun mic and I have it mounted on the top. I had to do a little adapting there. Uh, how do you mount a shotgun on such a little camera? And I had to do some adhesive and glue what's called a cold shoe. You normally would put like a flash on a camera, but in this case, that's how the microphone affixes. So you can see in this picture. Uh, the uh, windshield witness front facing dash cam has served me well for a number of years. Uh, I will probably keep that. Uh, so we can have one camera always shooting forward, one back. So that's my latest camera, the GoPro Hero 6 with that uh, shotgun microphone. And I'm uh, looking forward to the perspective that that will add to our reports as we start filing them this summer. If you're a regular viewer, you know we pride ourselves on serendipity traveling, but you still have to do some research and check out where you're going because you don't want to miss anything and be sorry later. Once we decide what route we're going to take, then we start checking on these cities, these areas that we're going to be driving through, and have a plan of what we hope to see. But if we find something else along the way that attracts our attention, we'll go with that. But we always have a backup as to what we're going to see. On this trip, we plan on following our 3.30 rule, which is stop at 3.30 in the afternoon or only drive 330 miles. We plan on documenting this on video, the 330 rule, and we're going to be leaving in a few days and you're going to be able to check in and watch us follow our route. Or not follow our route, depending on how it goes. Here's another task that needs to be done before hitting the road, updating the GPS system. I use the Garmin system and they offer free map updates. I just hook it up via an app to my computer and it downloads the new apps right into the GPS memory. Oh yeah, new batteries and all the flashlights we carry. I do this twice a year and that way we never have to worry about dead batteries in the flashlight. Now that Mike has the mechanical parts all set to go, I'm going to get the interior ready to go as well. And then I'll do an exterior wash and maybe even a little bit of wax because, you know, like they say about a car, there's something about a clean RV that just makes it feel like it rides a little bit better. Hey, that's, uh, that's what we're about to do. You might want to uh, send us some suggestions or tips. Use the description below to tell us what you do to get your RV ready for a long travel season. And uh, we want them to subscribe too to our we YouTube sure channel. Just uh, click that subscribe button. And you might want to hit that little bell icon. And that way you'll be notified when we have new videos, which we have on all the time. We're Mike and Jennifer Wendland. Thanks for watching.